When it pours like this, you probably don't give much thought as to where the water goes, unless it goes into your neighborhood and creates flooding. Where Staten Island's rainwater travels and how it is managed is a unique and very interesting story. You wouldn't know it to look at it, but this beautiful spot is a highly engineered drainage system, as is this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one too. These scenic locations are all part of the Staten Island Blue Belt. The Blue Belt program is such a success that Mayor Bloomberg, Borough President Molinaro, and Councilman Otto are expanding the system to the mid-island areas of Midland Beach, South Beach, and Oakwood Beach, which are notoriously plagued with flooding during heavy rains. Staten Island is a special place. It's a place where there are trees and there are natural areas and we have ponds and wetlands and streams that are worthy of preservation. So rather than creating a conventional storm sewer system that would have resulted in the destruction of so many of these natural areas, the Blue Belt is an effort to preserve these natural areas and incorporate them into the, the drainage system. This is uh, what some people like to call thinking out of the box. In the sense of instead of putting down sewers, he used, an, he used the actual resources of nature to purify and disperse storm water. That's both beauty and effectiveness. Water drainage is the primary function of the Blue Belt. When we get heavy rains, the water must be allowed to drain off the streets so that flooding and flood damage does not occur to streets, neighboring properties, homes, and businesses. Most streets on Staten Island have conventional storm sewer drains, as do the streets in the other boroughs. But once the heavy rainwater flows into these drains, that is where our system of water drainage is very special. Instead of the water flowing through an expensive system of underground pipes, it is channeled into an ingeniously engineered natural drainage system known as a BMP, short for Best Management Practice. And here we are at one of the BMPs, and this particular one is a constructed wetland, a specially uh, built uh, man-made wetland area. And what this does is it reduces the impacts of that urban stormwater coming off of the streets in the developed areas. So at this location, we slow down the velocity of the stormwater so it's not as erosive and not as destructive. We have special uh, uh, facilities here that allow for contaminants and sediments to settle out where we can collect them. Uh, we are here at a site that is under construction right now. Uh, once this site is done, it looks very natural and functions in a very natural way. However, there's a lot of detailed engineering and design effort that goes prior to it being to fully functional. As the design engineer of the Staten Island Blue Belt Stormwater Systems, we go through a detailed rainfall analysis of the area to come up with an accurate estimation of how much rainwater we have to handle in these facilities. The next step is come up with the design drawing. This design drawing lays out all the key features and the specifications. One of the key features is the hydraulic structure that is the weir that sets up the water surface elevation and also comes up with the conveyance. Here you see it in the design and then this is how it's constructed. The basic concrete structure is first constructed and then the, the structures are stone faced. All of this detailed work is again provided in the designs and it is very interesting to see how a paper design gets implemented and then once the entire facility is done uh, it looks so natural. Now coming from a site that is under construction we are now at a site that was constructed about two years ago. As you can see this is a natural functioning wetland with the stormwater conveyance and storage requirements as designed. The detailed analysis rainfall simulations and the design bases that were developed for this site are confirmed by its successful operation for the last two years during which it's handled quite a few big storms and all of this provides a great benefit to the community it serves. We're here at a Blue Belt site within Blue Heron Park located at the dead end of Booth Avenue and this is typical of one of our sites where we have water that comes out of the stormwater system and flows out to a natural water body. And wanted to speak just briefly about 
how we naturally landscape these sites because all the sites are designed with nature in mind. Uh, in the background behind me here we have one of our typical landscape plans and at all blue, blue belt sites we use only native plants and what a native plant is is a naturally occurring plant that's been in a particular location for a long period of time. So we don't bring in any exotic material, only that which naturally occurs on Staten Island. This maple tree here, this was intentionally saved, so the designers on their plans designed the site around the tree in order to save it. So wherever possible, we try to save natural features such as wetlands, uh, forests, or trees. Uh, let's take a walk down to the water's edge and discuss the, how the wetland plants improve water quality. And a wetland plant is essentially a plant that grows in standing water. Uh, after a rain event, what happens is the water collects in the new stormwater system and flows out into one of our blue belt wetlands. And at that point, we take the opportunity to use natural plants to remove some of the pollutants that we commonly find in stormwater. And so, for instance, in this case, we've planted pickerel weed, this flower along the water's edge, this plant uh, with the purple flowers. And as the contaminated water comes into the site, these plants actually take up a great deal of things such as nitrogen and phosphorus. The plants also cleanse the water through a process illustrated in this animation, showing the natural pumping of oxygen down through the stems of the plants into the root zone. This oxygen then feeds beneficial bacteria that remove the contaminants from the water. In order to measure the efficacy of our blue belt systems, including structures such as our wear walls and the wetland plants that actually treat the water, we recently conducted a water monitoring program uh, with the EPA. And what we found was a marked increase in water quality with uh, different parameters such as nitrogen, phosphorus, and turbidity. Uh, turbidity is a measure of how much dirt is in the water column, so the water flowing out is much cleaner than the water flowing in the system from the streets. This animation depicts how the stems and leaves of the plants help to reduce the velocity of the water, which in turn allows the dirt particles time to settle in the pond. The dirt particles, contaminants, and sediments are collected by a giant vacuum cleaner on wheels known as a vector truck. They clean up all that nasty uh, material that collects in, in our facilities, in the places where we want it to collect. So the vectoring is a very important kind of housekeeping uh, function to keep these systems working properly and to enhance the water quality as much as we possibly can. Not only are we doing uh, water quality improvement with these BMPs where we, we enhance the quality of the water, we're also doing quantity control where we're controlling the quantity of water that's flowing down into the system. And this is the flood control function that's so important for everybody living downstream of here, where we hold the water back in these basins and then slowly release it after the peak of the storm so that uh, we're, we're uh, uh, preventing those flood surges from uh, potentially um, uh, disrupting uh, homeowners and people living downstream at this point. The structure I'm standing on is called a weir wall, and this is a structure we commonly use in the Blue Belt to create our ponds or wetlands. And it essentially does two things. It holds back the water, setting the water elevation, creating the pond, and releases the water slowly, as you see in the center of the weir wall here, uh, in a manner that during a rainfall, the water doesn't flow out at a fast rate and do damage downstream. Most of the BMP drainage areas have weir walls, as well as boundary walls, which are faced in stone and have become known on Staten Island for their beautiful design. The design methodology that we use in the Staten Island Blue Belt is 1800s rural Staten Island. We take our cues from the past and research through Staten Island museums, looking for photographs of design elements that once existed on the island, for example, bridges, culverts, and old boundary walls. We're standing along Sweetbrook right now, and the head wall you see behind me was designed using a photograph of a bridge that was built in 1845 along a brook called Betty Holmes Brook. The restoration for this section of stream that I'm standing alongside entailed removing six feet of sediment that had accumulated over the years, and then 
rebuilding the stream bed so that it would look like a natural stream bed. Every stone that you see was laid by man. It's not naturally occurring. And what we did was fortify the stream banks with stones so that in a heavy storm, the banks would not wash out. And we created what's known as a pool riffle effect. A riffle being a, a high point in the stream bed uh, made of stone and the pool being the low point in the stream bed. It's kind of like a roller coaster ride in the stream bed. And what that does is when the water's running through the stream, the riffle, the pile of stones, aerates the water. You can hear the effect of the riffle right behind me. And then after the water passes through the riffle, it'll move into the pool section of the stream where sediments can settle out, where fish will congregate, and where the water runs uh, without any obstructions until the next riffle, which will then aerate the water again. The boundary walls that we build on our projects are used to secure the property and to define the property. And the community is uh, very happy about the look of the stone wall. And uh, it's a great complement to you know, the elements that we incorporate into the Blue Belt project. The stones that we utilize for all of our built elements are local stones from a glacial moraine that deposited what is known as quartzitic sandstone in the region. The, the common name for the stone is Pennsylvania Colonial Fieldstone. And all of our boundary walls and bridges and culverts utilize that stone. That's the kind of a stone that you would find a farmer using if he was building a wall or a bridge back in the 1800s. The community has had a very positive response to the natural design and countrified look of the Blue Belt facilities. Well, as an example, the bridge directly behind me the style and the architect of that bridge reminds you of some small town up in New Hampshire or Connecticut. It does not remind you of New York City. It keeps it small town USA by uh, creating these ponds and these little running brooks. It gives the, the people of Staten Island the opportunity to co-mingle with them, to walk on the paths adjacent to them and to see nature at its best and nature working. The Blue Belt projects are helped to remain beautiful by the involvement of community groups in the highly successful Adopt a Blue Belt program. I think the other thing about the Blue Belt system that is so wonderful is that it is also an instrument for building community because so many people volunteer both to clean up and to plant and to maintain the areas that I think it really brings people together around developing an aspect of their community they really treasure. And this has been a, a wonderful uh, program that we've had on the South Shore where we've gotten local groups and families and individuals and businesses uh, coming forward to adopt Blue Belt sites and work to maintain them and keep them beautiful. So it's a, it's a real uh, outpouring of uh, community uh, sentiment to, to make sure that these beautiful natural areas uh, stay, stay the way they are. In uh, Richmond Town, um, we've done a tremendous amount of work there, improving the creek. We were able to restore Mill Pond, and that's, that's the pond that's right in the middle of historic Richmond Town. And it was built in the 1960s, many years ago, and there never had been any major renovation of it and it had filled up with sediment terribly. And there was only uh, maybe six inches of water uh, in the pond because there was so much muck in it. And we had to improve the pond in order to provide for that conveyance of storm water through that system. And we also needed to redo the weir, the dam there that's right next to the mill building, so that it could also uh, properly convey uh, the storm water. And we've pretty much finished all the Bluebell work in Richmond Creek. The real major project was at the, uh, is at the corner of Rockland and Meisner, uh, one of our larger uh, ponds, what we call extended detention ponds. And again, the, the idea of those ponds is to uh, detain the storm water within those basins uh, during the peak of the storm, and then slowly release that water after the storm has passed. I'm frequently asked by concerned citizens and local residents about the proliferation of mosquitoes in our stormwater ponds. Uh, mosquitoes like stagnant water, and I'd like to show you why this pond uh, is not the kind of environment that mosquitoes proliferate in. 
This is one of the major stream channels that feeds this stormwater pond. As you can see, even in a time of low flow, the channel has a good deal of velocity, and that velocity helps move water in the pond. We just witnessed how much water is entering the stormwater pond. But at the same time, water is also exiting the stormwater pond. This continuous flow of water helps to create a very gentle movement in the pond, and that also helps to discourage mosquito breeding. Our stormwater ponds are very similar to ponds that you would find in the wild. Because of that, there's a natural competition in the pond. This helps to control the mosquito population. Frogs, fishes, even dragonflies will eat mosquito larvae and help control the population. In the past three years, Borough President James Molinaro has completed a downzoning and zoning reform initiative that will prevent further dense overdevelopment in areas like these. And his efforts in partnership with Councilman James Otto have saved a valuable natural resource. They provided $1.5 million in funding for the purchase of Last Chance Pond, preserving this crucial link in the new Mid-Island Blue Belt. Last Chance Pond has now been added to the 250 acres of Bluebelt land on Staten Island. That number will soon be expanding by the 195 acres in three major phases. Phase one is Midland Beach, South Beach will be phase two, and Oakwood Beach phase three. This was done through the effort of the Department of Environmental Protection for the Department of Environmental Conservation and with the, the Office of Jim Otto and myself. It happened because there was 100% cooperation and there was a need for it. The borough president deserves so much credit because he took that ball, ran with it, put our state representatives around the same table, put DEC around the same table, formulated a game plan on how we can get this done sooner rather than later. Because if we had waited, uh, it was over. Because you can't have a blue belt with houses built in the middle of it. And this was the time for it because we were fortunate that the land wasn't built upon. If it had been built upon, this would not have been possible. Thanks to the New York State DEC, a one and a half year moratorium on permits for construction near these wetlands has given the New York City DEP valuable time to begin the process of designating specific areas for future acquisition. It was an absolute pleasure working with the Staten Island Borough President's Office the Department of Environmental Protection, the staff members of the DEC, the Department of Environmental Conservation, to make sure that the Blue Belt project of Staten Island was a success. These low-lying areas have chronic flooding and icing problems that will be alleviated by these three future Blue Belt drainage systems. The Midland Beach Blue Belt project, also known as New Creek, has already begun. This is a project that will enhance the quality of life on Staten Island. It will prevent street flooding from, uh, with far less construction-related hassle than building storm sewers. And in the bargain, it will also create the kind of diverse open spaces that Staten Islanders have come to enjoy. This cost for this, the cost for this project will be borne in part with discretionary capital dollars from the budgets of the Borough President Molinaro and Councilman Otto. Blue belts are not only less intrusive than storm sewer projects, they're also considerably less expensive. The New Creek System's projected price tag of $37.5 million is about $39 million less than the cost of building storm sewers to serve the same 2,000 acre area. Staten Island's existing Blue Belt corridors have already saved the city more than $80 million in sewer construction costs. A very important aspect of the Blue Belt is the cost savings part of it. Uh, for each one of these Blue Belt systems, we did a cost-benefit study comparing the cost of the Blue Belt acquisition and development to the cost of the, the large trunk sewers that were planned to be built and we found major savings with the Blue Belt approach. So it's not very often that you're able to do something that's not only beautiful and a real community amenity, but that also saves the city money. This is much better than sewing it. The cost effectiveness makes it much better. But the, the ambiance, the surroundings, the look, the appearance, 
it adds to that uh, countryfied looking that we're trying to preserve in Staten Island. The borough president's support and Councilman Otto's support have been critical in getting those uh, mid-island blue belts underway and to the point now where we're actually acquiring property. And it's, it's going to take time. We have to be patient. Uh, it, there's a lot of work that's preliminary that has to go into it before we can put a shovel in the ground and actually see physical improvements. But uh, the patience is going to pay off. When you're talking to a, a resident in Midland Beach who said, you know, I just had a basement that's flooded out. We got to get this blue belt done tomorrow. One of the frustrating things is trying to explain to that person because you, you, you want to help them. You want to help them sooner rather than later. But just how detailed of a process and how complex of a process this is creating a blue belt. You have to map out the area. You have to acquire property. Some of it is city owned. Most of it is owned by private entities. You have to actually do the construction of building the, the channels and cleaning out the channels. And that's why uh, what we try to do is break it into three phases. Focus on the Midland Beach area because that seems to be the, the, the worst location in terms of constant flooding. I have had the occasion to visit this site about two and a half months ago during a rainstorm with Councilman Otto. And whether you want to believe it or not, there was actually in the street ducks swimming by. And that's the condition that these people have lived under for so many, so many years. We spoke to the city, we showed them it was cost effective. And without the help and cooperation of this mayor, Mayor Mike Bloomberg, this project wouldn't be started today. So I want to thank the mayor in particular for seeing the necessity of producing this. We have approval from the city to acquire 66 acres of wetland property along there, which is going to be a very dramatic and a really spectacular preservation of a whole wetland system all through there. It's a major, major undertaking for us. And we're in the midst now of getting that acquisition completed. And then we're going to be undertaking the same kind of planning process that we've done down here on the South Shore, where we do a drainage plan for the whole watershed area. And we design these BMPs, these best management practices, uh, along the creek system. And then we do our environmental review, uh, all as part of that planning process and we do our permitting, uh, get all the permits that we need from all the different regulatory agencies, and then uh, we can get into actual construction, and we can build a new blue belt system there in New Creek that'll solve some of these flooding problems, that'll get the water off the streets of some of those low-lying areas that now suffer so terribly. Then our next project is, will be South Beach, which is closer to the Verrazano Bridge, and uh, we've just gotten approval to proceed with the acquisition there. So uh, that's, that project is also uh, on the fast track to, for completion, where we're going to be uh, acquiring about 35 acres of wetland property. And it'll be a great legacy for Staten Island to have these tremendous blocks of wetland area preserved for all time. The Blue Belt is not only an efficient way of handling stormwater, it's actually a beautification project. When we've completed this project in Midland Beach uh, and South Beach and Oakwood Beach, we are not only going to address the, the, the flooding issues, we're actually going to make this uh, a very attractive area. But for the Blue Belt, uh, the folks in Midland Beach and Ocean Breeze and South Beach and in Oakwood would have to deal uh, you know, with flooding problems uh, for, for the rest of their lives. And hopefully in the not too distant future, the Blue Bell is a reality and folks uh, don't have to hold their breath every time they hear the forecasters for rain. And we're very thankful to Borough President Molinaro and Councilman Otto for supporting us, and not only with their words, but also with their money. So they've understood that this, this is a, a chance to um, really provide an amenity for these communities and, um, and at the same time to provide this essential drainage function. And providing that drainage using a carefully engineered wetland system also gives one more huge benefit and that is in preserving and providing wildlife habitats. A variety of species make the Staten Island Bluebelt their home. So these Bluebelt projects are not just about flood control and not just about stormwater management. They're truly multi-objective projects that 
uh, that address other issues as well. For example, wildlife habitat. With these uh, blue-belled areas, we have a wonderful opportunity to attract wildlife and to give uh, animals a permanent uh, home. And in uh, Richmond Creek, we uh, utilize a fish expert in our design of a fish ladder right there at the weir at Mill Pond. This is something that, that wasn't there before, and it's a real improvement to habitat that we're, we were able to add to the, uh, to the system. So there's a, a, a kind of series of pools that are elevated from one level to the next so that American eels and, and other fish and aquatic life can squirm their way up and go from one level to the other to get past the weir and then to go on up into the system. These natural drainage systems must be maintained in order for them to efficiently handle the water from large storms. This task is performed by the Bluebelt Field Management Team. Another wonderful aspect of the Blue Belt system is the staff that's worked on it. They've worked with tremendous dedication and they've done just an amazing job and it's allowed them to partner with the community as well. We have a, a, a fantastic maintenance staff who are based here on the island. We have a field office here set up and they have been very creative in um, in finding all the different ways that we can properly maintain these sites. Uh, we're very concerned about being good neighbors and going along the perimeters of our properties and cleaning them up and keeping the grass cut. Tree trimming is a big part of that to make sure that we don't have any uh, situations that are unsafe where trees might be hanging over uh, a street or someone's house. So we have a regular uh, maintenance program to take care of all those tree problems. And we're also continually planting these areas. And, and that's not only for the aesthetic importance of that, but it's also important to have landscaped areas to prevent erosion. We're very, it's very important to have uh, all the um, bare ground areas stabilized with plant material because we don't want that uh, uh, soil to run off the surface and to enter into our blue belt system and fill up our ponds and our creeks with sediment. What makes the Blue Belt unique, what makes it special, is that it, there's a tremendous amount of engineering that went into it, but you don't see that engineering. When you look at it, you think this is a beautiful natural area that, uh, that uh, uh, the hand of man really didn't touch. The Blue Belt an engineering marvel and a natural wonder, right here on Staten Island. <laughs>